and follows the pillars of the earth. Set in the medieval times in England, after the Dauphin, I believe the word is, the prince who is supposed to be taking over the crown, dies in a shipwreck. The bastard brother is to take over the crown as the king is dying rapidly. This causes a bit of a split and there are now forces fighting for this bastard brother, King Stephen, and one's fighting for the opponent, Maud, a woman. In the midst of this, a small family made up of Tom Builder, his wife, who is currently pregnant, and his two, their two children, Martha and Alfred, are just trying to get by. Tom Builder wants to construct a new cathedral. They come upon a seemingly mute boy named Jack, although once he does start talking, he apparently believes himself to be Christian Bale. Thankfully, he does not go into the pitiful Eastwood impersonation. There is also a man of God, Waylorin, who wants power. There is another man of God, who seems a bit more honest. Philip, it's difficult to keep all these characters, keep track of all these characters. That might actually be about what I should say, because otherwise I'll lose you completely before I even get further in this review. There are a lot of characters and there's a lot of plot. This miniseries is made up of four episodes that are around an hour and a half each. So yeah, that is a pretty decent amount of time of intense plot, plot twists, developments. Each of these episodes is quite gripping from start to finish. And although this amount of character and plot can seem a bit much at first, I would say it pays off. The acting is rather good for almost everyone. Could maybe bring up one or two of the children, but they really don't have that big parts. The bad actors tend to not really appear that much. There are some characters that could be written out. The setting is stunning. We get a very realistic and authentic representation of England in the medieval times. Castles, just houses, villages, the weapons, the armor, everything quite detailed. You can tell that Ridley Scott executive produced this, so does his brother, Tony Scott. There is a lot of realism to it, a lot of psychological realism to the characters. I've heard some complaints that the bad guys, the villains of this, are entirely black and white, as in the black part of that analogy, and I kind of disagree. I will say that maybe one or two of them are, but on the whole, they're psychologically accurate. They are the type of people that do a lot of nasty stuff in real life, but it's explained. You can see why they are the way they are. And I think it is worth noting that the good guys in this really don't all behave all that nicely all the time. 
this has been called a bit of a soap opera, and I can kind of see that. There's a lot of manipulation, there's a lot of switching sides back and forth, a lot of tiny little developments that are then cancelled by new developments, and I can understand why some might call this a soap opera. Plus, there's a lot of violence, sex, and problems arising from those two. What I will say, though, is in that case, it's a really entertaining soap opera. Because, again, I was completely into it. I was every second of these characters, this plot, completely into it. I just really wanted to see what the next thing that was going to happen was. I mean, this just aired in Denmark. I literally just finished watching the fourth and final episode. They aired it four days in a row, and each day it was like... I can't wait to see the next episode. I can't wait to see what happens next and how it's going to end. Overall, it's pretty satisfying. The wrap-up at the end is a bit fast, but it basically does cover everything. Essentially, everything does get, you know, pay off. I would say that the characters are diverse and memorable enough that you do, you know, tell them, you're able to tell them apart once you've learned who is who. One could complain about the, as a feminist, I don't have a problem with women being portrayed as very strong and very independent. And speaking from personal experience, some women really are that. That rocks. But they really weren't allowed to be this outspoken back then. I mean, there is a little bit of, you know, oh, silence woman, but these women are getting away with way more than they would. And that is a bit unfortunate as far as the whole historical accuracy goes. And there are a couple of other things that don't entirely hold up. This takes place over a number of years, and I will say the aging makeup is pretty horrible. The action is great. The tension also great. There is some nudity and sexuality. Some of it might be called gratuitous. This is pretty critical of religion, which I think just comes naturally when you're being rational, but anyway. And it brings up a lot of really good points, especially in the first two episodes, I'd say. So many things that happened that were awful that happened back then because of the way things were, because people didn't have rights, because the church made so many decisions, so many pitiful fates just because of this bad system that retarded development and controlled people's lives for the good of no one. But I'm getting off topic. That might be about what there is to say about it. It keeps to a very nice pace. The dialogue does have some moments that are a bit... bad. But a lot of it is pretty good. There are some really memorable and quotable lines. This does, at times, kind of seem to be under the impression that it's Shakespeare, and it isn't. I mean, it, it just blatantly steals some stuff right out of, you know, Macbeth and Hamlet, and I'm sorry, the prose is not anywhere near lyrical enough to compete with Shakespeare, and this story is not Shakespeare. It isn't.
yeah, I think that might be about what there is to say about it, without going into any spoilers. So, if this does sound appealing to you, and it airs when you could be watching it, and you have all those hours to spare, I would definitely recommend this. You know, watch the first episode, see if you like it. It's pretty much that way throughout. Yeah, that was my spoiler review of Ken Follett's The Pillars of the Earth. I haven't read the book, but I hear that it does change some details. And some of that is to be expected, of course, but I watched this with two people who had read the book, who loved the book, and they said that it was pretty good, still. So, anyway, that was my spoiler for review of Ken Follett's The Pillars of the Earth. I'm going to end this video before I think of something else to say. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.